Hello, I'm back, and recently, I've been seeing things, good things, corporate things, things you could call a financially bad decision. Overwatch 2 is a dystopian, free-to-play gotcha game that was released as proof you can sell the same game twice. A 5v5 team-based shooter marketed by biotech bureaucrats like Microsoft, all to replace waterboarding as the premier torture method of the CIA. I'm sure glad to see this game got a sequel, and I know they didn't really have a choice, but despite my bad first impression, this game was pretty good at one point. So what happened? How did we get here? Well, the lead developer, Jeff Kaplan, was actually improving the game. So naturally, they fired him because they weren't losing talent fast enough. This was followed by a three-year period where nothing happened and the remaining sweatshop factory workers were forced to make a sequel at gunpoint. Now all that's left are suits, trying to eke out as much profit as possible. And now you're here to pick up the scraps like Dark Souls or some shit. I had a joke here and I thought it would be funny enough to get demonetized, but then I realized I don't get sponsors anyway, so here it is. If I can make a pipe bomb purely from TikTok instructions, then laugh when I end up on the local news, then I can surely tell if you're qualified to play shooting games online. To which the answer is, my friend doesn't open his mailbox, and he keeps leaving the country. Luckily, I'm getting really good at GeoGuessr. The goal of this game is to get the player to pay $20 for a skin you unlocked in the first game for free. So you can throw your ranked games equipped with a sticker you got from a battle pass you paid $10 for. Okay, what the f- There are three game modes you can choose to partake in. Control, Payload Escort, and uh, the iFunny Robot. Control is a honeypot operation run by the feds to see how many racial slurs your Moira can fit in a single sentence. You're fucking illegal and you shouldn't be in the United States. Move them. God. Wow. Payload Escort is a social game where both teams try to gaslight their main tank to run through a narrow choke to his death. And push is a... Gosh, how about you suck my dick? On one hand, there's quick play, which is just the normal one round game mode. And on the other, you have ranked, which I think is slightly less worse than waterboarding. Push is just kind of control and payload mash together. You fight for a bot, whoever wins a team fight pushes the bot till they die, because uh, it's push, it's probably gonna happen. Repeat until your tank dies of a heart attack. Team fights in this game have the graphical clarity of censored Japanese pornography, especially when the most seeable move in this game is a uh, rainbow laser beam. We somehow have less characters than the first one, and the brand image of this game has somehow been replaced with the Dark Souls logo. That's quite typical as far as free-to-play games go, but I digress. You'll find this game takes a very extreme view of uh, racial stereotypes. Oh, hang on, I'm getting a phone call. Hi, I'm Clockwork, and this video is sponsored by Azure Lane. Oh, uh, what the fuck? I gotcha game where you can kill battleships and date children. I did not agree to this. Sign up now and receive your Atelier Ryza collaboration reward now. Uh, 25 years in prison, please stop. When I signed up, I was a 6 foot 5 Asian giga chad with a jawline that could cut diamonds. Okay, but, but now, I'm a big titty sissy femboy who spends 3500 a month on phone games, like, uh, Diablo Immortal. Come on, guys. Don't you have, a uh, phones or something? Also, uh, please let my family go. I've done everything you asked. Alright. Anyway, back to the real mobile game. Oh, good. A character roster I can get behind, full of hot fictional women that aren't real and the moderator who banned me off iFunny. So what do you do in this game? Well, what do I do in this game? I hit the play button, pick soldier, and eventually lose, because I'm not playing Sojourn. Eventually, I start having fun, and I'm not sure if that's because I like holding four other people hostage, or that I finally developed Stockholm Syndrome. Cassidy isn't particularly damaging or mobile, but he had a flashbang to keep people off the back line, and in a drawn out team fight, he could just headshot the enemy. Now, he's what you would call minus 25 SR. Soldier doesn't have the instant kill potential of Cassidy, but he was very fast, was very good at flanking, and had very consistent damage. Now, he's gay. Sojourn has a railgun that's completely hit scan, has no cooldown, can headshot, and will just instantly kill you if it did. Of course, this was incredibly fun. So Blizzard nerfed it, and now, she can still do the same thing with Mercy Pocket, which makes you really wonder if they actually playtest their own changes. Character Genji is the premier throw pick for people who love anime. The stereotypical Genji player is what happens when you, uh, don't beat your kids. Eventually, Genji will ult and say famous anime one-liners like, We should lower the age of consent, or, You're so mature for your age, and, 
please accept my friend request on Genshin Impact. Cassidy is a great pick for people who like to roleplay as a sex offender. With a quick press of his ultimate, Cassidy has the unique ability to respawn. With a flick of your wrist, you can throw a Semtex and kill people with the most balanced ability since Flashbang. Kiriko is a DPS that was moved to support because she supports people by killing them via Kunai Lobotomy. Eventually, she gets her ultimate, which allows your entire team to trample your opponents like it's a Travis Scott concert. Soldier is a geriatric clone of Victor from Paladins. His sole purpose is to be power crept completely out of the game by Sojour. He is a generic Call of Duty man picked mainly by ANCAP COD players who don't know what the sun looks like. Reaper is for people who don't play the game despite him actually being pretty good for once and instead browse the forums asking why all the women still have shoes on. Widow players spend 500 days on Kovacs and then quit once they get carpal tunnel. I feel like most people know who Widowmaker is. They just don't know what Overwatch is. Tracer is for people with ADHD and Parkinson's and is technically the best character in the game if you do methamphetamine. She is proof that the war on drugs is real and we're not winning it. I feel like most people know who Tracer is. They just don't know what Overwatch is. Mercy is really complex. She has to be. I mean, why else are there so many search results for this character? I could go on, but I play like one character, so... I think the last time I played ranked, I told myself I wouldn't go on such a long, cynical tangent and I lied through my teeth. Do you want a real opinion? Here it is. Don't feel like there's an obligation to do or to grind for anything. If you let it, this game will absolutely consume whatever free time you've got and you're gonna burn out. I think that's it. I finally hit Grandmaster and I learned something. I don't want to go any further. I stopped having fun at around Diamond. And you know why? It reminds me of every other corporate wood chipper I've ever worked at. There's never a level where you receive praise. It's never enough because you're either the best or you're dead last. I remember one guy told me to drink bleach because I missed a strafing Lucio jumping off a ledge at the slow trackable pace of 10 billion miles an hour. And it stuck with me. Not because he told me to end my life over a video game. That's just normal Overwatch. But I knew that if I continued playing this game, I would eventually be just like that guy. A Torbjorn player. But I digress. Should you play Overwatch 2? You guys made the best thing ever wrong. Hey, why the fuck are you playing soft? This idiot says not really touch my bag. Suck my dick. I should have gone to medical school. I'd like to give a big thanks to the IRS for bankrolling and funding these videos. Without them, I'd be living in Dubai or some other offshore country where taxes aren't constantly audited. <laughs> anyway, sorry about the Patreon. I just needed a legal way to offshore my bank account. <laughs> this is goodbye for now. See you guys next time.